Hello, I pray that you are well today. The word of God from John chapter 4. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. And so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. There are very unusual things in this event. The first one is that he stops in Samaria. The second one, it says, it's in the heat of the day at noon. When the Samaritan woman came to draw the water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. That's the second thing. The reason why she's there in the middle of the day is because she's an, an outcast. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. He's talking about spiritual blessing. Sir, well, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did his sons and his livestock? And she's thinking on a surface level. But he answers, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. What a beautiful image of the nature of faith. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. I don't want to get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. Now he speaks truth to her. She said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you've had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you've just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. So what's she doing? She's trying to deflect what he's saying by saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm something else. I don't have to listen to you. She goes on to say, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. I'm sorry, verse 21. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and now has come, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. To worship God in spirit and in truth, in honesty, in what's true on the inside. God is spirit, and his, spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he'll explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. He says, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples returned. We're surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why you're talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? How she summarizes it. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. God knows everything you have ever done. Every word you've ever spoken every thought you've ever thought, every tear you have ever cried, every action you have ever taken, everything. He knows everything, and he loves you intensely. That is why we worship him in spirit and in truth. That is why we worship the Jesus who seeks and saves those that are lost. That is why we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. I find great comfort in that God knows. For me personally, I don't know. I don't know so many things. I wish I did. I don't. I try to. I can't. But God does. He knows everything you've ever done. He knows your future. He knows the details of your life. And you can trust him. Everything you've ever done. Everything you ever will do. Every word you will ever speak. And he loves you. I thank you for your support.
and encouragement and your blessing to the church. I encourage you, I was just down today dropping off some clothes for uh, some guys downtown and I was talking to the people who are running the place and they're looking also for tarps. If you have tarps or you're not using tents, they can use both those things if you're not using them anymore. And I want you to pray. By the grace of God, Fran is getting out of the hospital. We're grateful for that. We're praying for James, praying for Brian, praying for Robert. Please pray with me. Lord God, we pray for our sisters and brothers who have great need. You know. You know everything that we've ever done, everything they've ever done, everything that they need. And we cry out before you and we ask you for wisdom because we don't have it. We need it. We cry out before you for it. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today.